Welcome to Watch Your Point Overtime, where we extend, kind of drop our guards a little bit, uh, get truthful, even more truthful than our regular so broadcast. More truthful. <laughs> more truthful. <laughs> yes. this time, oh, all right. All right. This, I this can time quit we're lying. telling the truth. <laughs> okay. We're dig a little deeper. Uh, okay. Hey, I want to start with the border, which we didn't talk about in depth in the regular show. And, and, and fortunately, Bob keeps a very close eye. It is the number one issue in this election. I think up there with the economy. Uh, but Bob, uh, what's going on down there? Well, thanks to Governor Greg Abbott, this is now the number one issue for every primary voter so far. They've all come out and said that this is their top issue. Even more than Biden inflation, the, the border is, is the big issue for them. And that's in part because Governor Abbott created this issue by busing migrants from Texas to these sanctuary cities forcing the sanctuary cities to realize this costs a lot of money. <laughs> and Texas has been paying that money, Texans have been paying that money for a long time. Um, and so the combination of increased border enforcement by Texas, the threat of SB4's Texas immigration law, which is still pending in the courts, uh, coming into play, and actions that were secretly taken by the Biden administration in Mexico to get Mexico to go, come up to the border and raid this, the stash houses uh, along the southern side of the border and take those migrants and send them back to the other end of the country. Uh, so they have to basically start the process all over again. That has forced a shift in migration patterns now from the five Texas-based sectors to the Tucson sector and the San Diego sector. Texas is down on year-to-date numbers this year about 28% compared to where it was last year. Now, last year was a record-setting year, so 28% is not a huge drop in numbers, but it is a drop. The, the Tucson sector is up 176% compared to the same period last year, and the San Diego sector is up 76, 67%, excuse me, uh, compared to the same numbers last year. So Tucson's looking right now at about 11 to 12,000 migrants crossing per week into that one small section of the border. Um, and there's a big, been a big shift to our northern border where the northern border is up about 76% compared to what last year was. And the Swanton sector, which is Eastern New York, Vermont, and New Hampshire, is up 400% over last year. Uh, and about half of those are actually Mexican nationals that are crossing the border from Canada into that sector. You know, for me, uh, the 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 the, no, the moment the the light bulb went on for uh, that this is crossing all party lines is that UT uh, Tex, Texas Tribune poll which showed that f a full forty percent of, of Democrats in Texas support more border barriers support more border enforcement uh, that's a a big number uh, Paul thoughts I know you have family yeah. uh, in border enforcement I think. Yeah, so there's that element, and then there's just this, you know, there's a concern, I think. I think most, most Texans understand, uh, Americans understand, if you're going to have uh, a coherent country, a coherent state, you have to have border policies, and those border policies are important. Um, I think that one of the biggest things that I just don't understand is how a negotiated bill, like the border bill that came through and then got shot down last minute, uh, how that didn't pass. If this is such an emergency, that should have been something that people come to the table with. Sure, people who are partisans on each side hate parts of it. I understand that. I completely understand that. And it was a negotiated bill. And a negotiated bill where you have a divided government like we do, there are some things that are just going to be poison pills and hard to eat. Uh, and if it's such an emergency, that's something that should have been placed on the table, have the negotiations live on TikTok, and we could all watch it. <laughs> and I think something good could have come out of it. I'm sad it didn't. I mean, we had multiple discussions on this. You know, the suggestion was that there was no change in policy, and it said in statute these limits. You know, my response to that was, okay, let's get the money for more enforcement, money for more technology, win the election in the fall, and then you change the statute and make it a, a tougher bill. They couldn't guarantee, they can't guarantee that. And, and, and it kind of goes to the argument that they're preserving the crisis in order to preserve the fury in order to win in it's the fall. Well, that, that was the Democrat so, spin on the issue, yeah. but that's not. Hold on, hold on, let, let Bob go and but, then we'll go, we'll go to Gary. But that's not the mm -hmm. case. The bill was a bad bill. Uh, the, bill's, the bill said this really funny thing. If, the numbers exceed 5,000 per day crossing. Mm -hmm. We will shut down the border. Right. 
if you can shut down the border when it's 5,000 a day, why can't you shut down the border when uh, it's 1,000 yeah, a day? Right. You know, and, and during the Obama administration, they said 1,000 per day was a crisis level that was unsustainable. Well, we had days during last year where it was 10 to 12,000 per day coming across, and that's completely unsustainable. So the bill wouldn't have done anything. It was a feel-good bill. It was a propaganda bill so that Biden could say he was doing something about the border that wouldn't actually do anything about the border and um, it, it died the way it should have died. This was very similar to the Gang of Eight bill that uh, Senator Marco Rubio was in on uh, during the Obama administration where they basically set up a rising star in the Republican Party for failure and it trashed his, his political hopeful career in the future. One of my favorite sound bites recently is <clears throat> tomorrow Bill says, I don't care, get a wall, get a drone, get more people, something's gotta be done. Listen, I agree <laughs> with what Paul said. And I agree with what you said. It was somewhere to start because this is not sustainable. And when America should have noticed that this was crossing party lines was when the mayor of New York came out and agreed with Abbott about this. That was a true sign because he was like, hold on, we can't do this. Number one, in Texas down here, we do have mostly 70 and up days. In New York, they have mostly 50 and below days. So it's like, we can't just leave them on the street or leave them outside or whatever, or put them with, they gotta, you know, find somewhere. So they took African-American elementary schools and shut them down, put them back on Zoom and put them in there. So this crisis where other people could care less, didn't know nothing about, <laughs> when Abbott started busting people, I said it before and I said it again, it was the right thing to do. I don't care what y'all say. That is when it became a national item. Before it was a Texas, Arizona, California, Florida issue. The other people, they, they could care less. But this brought it to the forefront. And this is not sustainable. It is not sustainable. I said it before, I said it again. I know y'all don't like it, my husband hates it. But the border, border policies that Trump had in place should have stayed. They should have stayed, we wouldn't be in the situation that we are in now. But the Republicans was wrong as hell to not pass that border bill because that would have given us something. And it absolutely was not a delusion because the money that was going to give to increase border security, border security and border mm -hmm. patrol was real. That was real money. Yeah. Actually, it wasn't. They, they yeah. hold, 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 let, I'm going to let Gary go and then I'm going to let you okay. rebut that. And I'm sorry, see. Go ahead, Gary. Go ahead, Gary. I'm going to go get the water. Remember that the bill okay. comes forward as a take it or leave it bill. Yeah. Okay. So there was no amendments. There, there was no opportunity to change it. The bill was a political cover for Biden, as indicated by Bob, so they could say we did something about it. But one of the problems with how government <clears throat> operates, when they pass a bill, the line's going to be from everyone. Oh, we, we passed a bill. It, it should take care of it. And then pass the election. It didn't. It's like whatever. So that's a huge problem. The bill was a joke. Uh, what's costing New York? And, and uh, this is one of the reasons, by the way, that the, this is the issue. And that's why I think at the end of the day, if Trump wins, it'll be because of this issue, because people in New York, African-American Democrats, their kids are getting tossed out of school so they can take care of illegals. And yeah, it's illegals, and there's nothing ashamed about <coughs> saying it. It is true. You know, our immigration policy is a giant joke, and we need to get it together. Passing a feel-good bill wasn't going to do it, and they want to blame Trump all they want. That's fine. But the Democrats have a big problem because they support open borders. Bob, you know, and, and I may have just read bullet points, but, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the huge multi-billion dollars allotment for additional immigration courts mm -hmm. it was a big selling point. And, you know, look, you know I've been a hawk on this, and, and, and it was kind of like progress, not perfection. Mm -hmm. Uh, take the take the money, get the border patrol and, and and the border patrol union, which you have great contacts with. Sure, they they endorsed it, yes. but I and it made sense. Look, I get it. It was uh, you know it was a finger in the dike and maybe not even a very effective finger. And uh, but I also get what. run on uh the republicans are going to run on the border as well they should mm -hmm. uh and and you don't just hand why the, the other side pass. the opportunity to say hey we did something i get that but so anyway i'm sorry I'm so here, here's the money issue the money was not 
Yes, the immigration judges were important, but apparently the Obama administration doesn't think these immigration judges are important because they've muzzled all of them now. They're not allowed to speak out about what they're actually seeing in these courts, uh, which is a big problem. But the money was not to secure the border. The, the additional agents that they were going to bring down there were to more quickly process the migrants and release them into the country. And that's not border security. That's just babysitting service and being the... the last mile delivery service for the Mexican cartels. Uh, and, and that's what we've been doing for the last three and a half years. So Biden didn't need a bill to fix the border. Biden messed up the border with a single stroke of a pen on January 21st, 2021. He could fix it with another stroke of the pen by rescinding that executive order that he did and putting those policies back in, tra in place that reduced migrant crossings in April of 2020, in Trump's last full year in office, to only 19,000 for the entire southwest border in a month. We had 22,000 cross in the last two weeks just in the Tucson sector. That's a stunning number. Paul? Yeah, I, I <clears throat> want to go back to like the facts of what the bill included, including those additional judges that we're going to Yes, process people faster, but in part of that is, is send people back whose asylum uh, claims are going to fall short. A big part was going to be to tighten up the asylum process, tighten up, uh, uh, disallow people from getting a job for the first, I think, 90 days of being here in the U.S. There would have been a lot of things that would have removed incentives from people doing it without question. Right now, it's so simple for a person to come over and just get lost in a system and trust that they have five years to establish themselves, have a kid, create a story around why they should be allowed to stay. All of those things are terrible. And the money, the money which is missing right now for additional border security agents, you know, additional border patrol agents and additional uh, judges to process these claims, that would have been included. Yes, not a great bill, and in the divided government, I think it's something that's needed. It, uh, it wasn't going to accomplish any of those things, okay? The new judge, it, the whole process is messed up. And these people, what is it, 80 or 90 percent don't even show up right. for court. Right. Right. They're gone. Right. Let's okay. I, so I run one, into one some of them because they're in the criminal courthouse because they some of, them, some of them, not all of them, but some get charged with crimes. Well, this, this, this murder, high-profile murder in, in Georgia is... Say her name. Lincoln uh, Riley. Lake, yeah. Lake, Lake and not Lincoln, as Joe Biden would say. Right. Right. Uh, is going to be is is going to be a big rallying cry for uncommitted voters because that was a that was a she'll be the Willie Horton of this uh, this campaign. So you mentioned the National Border Patrol Council. Brandon Judd, who's the president of that, came out after and before the State of the Union address and told the president not to use their name as part of his speech because. While they backed parts of the bill, the bill was flawed, and, and they didn't want really their name associated with it. Okay, we're going to keep a close eye on that, but I want to shift to another huge issue, and that is the, uh, the Houston Police Department and these <clears throat> uninvestigated allegation, criminal allegations uh, <coughs> and, and what should happen next. The big issue, and I'm going to go to you, Sue, on this, uh, we heard... Chief Troy Finner say, I need 2,000 more police officers, a 40% increase in the, in the force. Is this crisis going to trigger that kind of expansion, Sue? Can it? I don't know. If, I mean, it's just a fact we need them. I don't think you have to have a crisis to point out what we need on this. So I think this investigation and this is, is they're trying to use it to say we need more officers, but I, I think this crisis is is different. Okay, um, not just that; it's just some so, somebody that says, "Hey, we can make the stats look better." And, and begin. This started back with the um, Acevedo, with Acevedo, you know, Mayor Turner's police chief. It started back then, and it was a way to take and move move what they deter they determined cases they couldn't go and investigate anymore and give them a code and move them off to the side you know which then it makes your numbers look better now some of them are like you tomorrow you know they came out and said hey just you got insurance well you have to call an incident report in for your insurance to kick in and take care of your accident so some of those were incidents where they were really reports of, <coughs> of my property was stolen. We don't have evidence. We can't find anybody, but you have to do a report 
to get your insurance. Some of those were. But under the, um, the, the sexual assault, under the felon, all of that, no, absolutely unacceptable. And it was just a way to move it over. And then you can say, well, we don't have enough police officers to do this. Uh, we, we don't know what to believe now. Well, well, we just thing, don't know what to is, believe. It, it, Finner says he told them to stop. Why didn't they? To me, that's the main thing. Why did his officers not obey his command? And why didn't he know that they weren't obeying his command? Yeah, exactly. the, the real question here, here is the why. Why were they doing this? Why was the city putting out propaganda, make, trying to make people feel like crime was on its way down and things were doing better? We had an election going on, and John Whitmire had made crime his major platform for the campaign. They wanted to take that away from her, or at least water it down, so that he couldn't be as effective in his campaign, and perhaps Sheila Jackson Lee could have been our next mayor. No, they started, as they said, in Acevedo, so you don't know no, what no, you're talking uh, about. It started don't tell with me Acevedo. I don't know what I'm talking I, this about. This started now. under Acevedo, oh, no, Sue said right. it. <laughs> this didn't start, this didn't just start. Okay, Bob, this did not just start. This started no. back Finner, over Finner eight years ago. Finner said for it to stop, so it, why didn't it stop? It did not stop because the assistant chief who he told mm -hmm. to make right. it stop, who he has an email showing it. And, and, and he memo, said it Just say what you want to say and don't be He had it stop when no. he became the police chief, which was years it's, before right. there was ever a campaign. This is really But there was right. a propaganda, hold on, a hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You know, Chris Ridicule came on last week and suggested that the order went out and and then the Astroworld crisis happened, uh, the debacle, and, and it got lost, which was, you know, information I didn't know. But well, I mean, let's look at this, folks. This is this 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 all went on uh, during the, the lion's the, share during the Turner administration, correct. which crossed two different two, uh, two, two different police chiefs. Uh, I don't know what the reckoning is going to be for, for Troy Finner w or whether there will be well, one. But here's, here's the point that's important. We are under-policed. We've been under-policed right. for yeah. a yeah. years. Yeah. That is absolutely okay, okay. We can all agree on that. Yeah. Yeah. We can all yeah. agree yeah. on that. Yeah. We are arguing that. <laughs> Nobody. This We're talking not about hold on, hold on. within L the L department L administration. Let Gary talk. Okay. So we're under-policed. We know the detectives are overworked. We need to do like we're doing with the rest of the city budget. Somebody needs to take a look at the police budget and see if there's money within that budget before we uh, go over to the people again for more money that we can reassign or put the money more in detectives so they can investigate. More on s for street patrol, which is inadequate, if we can do that first. But then we're going to probably need to put more resources there, which we've had to do for a long time. But the whole plan with this was to spike the uh, crime rate. This is what so I'm so I, I, I was talking yesterday to a retired uh, police officer who I respect a great deal, and he said, Greg, we don't even need lieutenants. That's a waste yes. of a, 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 a job. Any Your any officer. officer that's sitting behind a desk really needs to be evaluated. Those guys can be doing something else. Those can be uh, have if if it's critical, you can have a civilian uh, potentially in that position. Uh, look, I've also said we got two and a half million people being policed by. A total of 5,000, 1,500 of which are behind desks. So we got 3,500 on control. three uh, on on three shifts. Exactly. That's, what did we, what did we think was going to happen? Exactly. Right. Exactly. But, yeah. When's the last time they, you saw a traffic stop on the freeway? No. Nah. But the <laughs> county the county put in civil, civilian uh, jailers a long time ago to uh, to reduce the officers in there. The city took the civilian jailers out and put in officers at the jails and got rid of all those people. And they need to look at, we just like you said. anymore. The state doesn't right, have Right, 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 right. Whatever they, the, the, the down yeah. at the county where they put right. them. But they need to look at how many of these desk jobs can go to civilians and get the officers back out on the force to increase the amount of officers that are out there. But you know, this is, this is a, I'm not kidding, as somebody who's then had several of these incident reports and suit said, um, this is a problem if you're trying to get a hold of this or if this is holding you up with your insurance, if you think there's something wrong on it and they haven't investigated it and you're like, that's not what happened. That's why I said, take your phone out if you have an incident. But under Acevedo, we had a serious, serious issue that still has not went to court. 
Two people were killed the in their house, yeah. minding right. their own business. I mean, and that 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 mm -hmm. was unimaginable when that occurred. Okay, and okay. this is before COVID. We had wait, we had three members of this panel I know who've lost family members to crime yes. or almost lost mm -hmm. family yes. members to crime. A home invasion, I believe My it was brother. your brother yes. and your beloved son. I mean, you know, Paul, you still have regular contact with, with the survivor mm -hmm. community. I mean, this, is, this has got to be a gut punch. Well, what it feels like from the victim's perspective is everything seems to be messed up and wrong, right? And so, um, Holly Hansen recently posted, reposted a KHOU report that showed that with these new judges that have come in just in the last four years, five years, the number of people who were solely being monitored by ankle monitors has gone from 326 to 4,100, okay? Of the 4,100, one third of them have violated the terms of their ankle monitor, mm -hmm. right? So that's on top of these hundreds of thousands of cases that have just been, you know, who knows what's happening. So the number of people who are not being held to account for their bad behaviors has just been going up and up and up. And when it feels like things are wrong, everyone knows that there are these super predators who are out there who are being taken, you know, put back on the street. Even the guy who went and killed that 12 year old and then escaped to the border, you know, he came back and yes, he has a bond and maybe he won't be able to reach it. Maybe he can reach it, you know, it's just a million dollars and a million dollars can be reached, especially if you still have some people who are doing some crooked things. But all these things seem to be piling up. You have what happened in HFD, what happened with HPD, those who pay attention to HISD, the new superintendent yes. just put out a report that showed the incompetence and the wasteful spending that was going on by prior administrations. And so when we look around, no matter where we look, everything <laughs> seems to be broken and wrong. And it's just, it, it makes me feel anxious and worried all the time. Gary, uh, you know, we have a, a candidate now for, uh, who says we're gonna do away with uh, most probations. We're gonna go to a lot of deferreds and that the criteria is going to be, you just need to be bettering yourself. Uh, perhaps Lee, and he's suggesting that that we have these programs yeah, yeah. for 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 uh, to go the trades to go and be a a, a helper for a, <laughs> uh, yeah. And if you're making four or five grand a week stealing sure. or trafficking, uh, yeah. I mean, you deal with some of these clients. I Are do. these guys going to go become plumbers helpers? Uh, no. No, no, some of them might, but <laughs> most of them won't. Look, this is basically what we're getting uh, in in the DA's race now. Uh, is the Democrat who beat the incumbent is going on, basically going left on steroids. He wants to bring to Harris County what we have in New York, Chicago, San Francisco. DAs that just are lenient and soft on crime. That is wrong. Now that the voters have a choice because Dan Simon running as a Republican wants to make things a little tougher on the criminals and, and cares about the victims. This is very important. We need to look beyond the city of Houston. The city of Houston is the whipping boy for, for everybody. Harris County's got issues too. We have a vastly overcrowded jail. We have a sheriff's department whose clearance rate ain't much better mm -hmm. than HPD's. Yep. And, and yep. there's a sheriff's race this year. He should be answering, that sheriff should be answering. We have a good Republican candidate, Knox, who I think will do a better job, but he's got to answer why things aren't working. What's wrong what, in the jail? I've had three clients killed in the jail, okay? There are jail officers, there are police officers who work in the jail who have been assaulted and raped and beat up. Our jail's out of control and forget the streets, the streets are ridiculous. So we have a very serious problem and the voters need to get serious. It's not about party labels. Look who's running, look what these people are stand for. Tomorrow we got about a minute and okay. a half. Listen, mm -hmm. uh, in 2018 on this show, we talked about the my primary race. Do you remember that? And we talked about the primary race in 2018. We talked about the numbers between the Democrats and the Republicans. And the Democrats had <laughs> outvoted the Republicans. In the primary, we looked at the county judge race. And, the amount of, and they were like, oh, well, that's just the primary. You know, a lot of people don't vote during that and everything. Then when it came to the general, the same results. Listen, in this race right here, Republicans outvoted Democrats by over 40,000 votes. Which race? In that Harris County, in all the races, Democrats the versus Republicans in the primary race, the Republicans outvoted about forty thousand votes. So I'm telling you, that shows you that everybody, because I don't know why y'all look at a person's color, and y'all assume one thing about them. Knox is my friend. Let me be clear with you. Knox is my friend, and I'm telling you, this thing in Harris County.
This started under Adrian because when Adrian got in, he uh, got rid of all long-term jailers who had people respected, they didn't mess with, got in all these new people who a lot of the people who were in the jail were friends with the people who were supposed to be watching them and it's been going down ever since. When Bill King ran, he talked about how low Adrian's clearance rate was even back then and it's only gotten worse, okay? It's only got worse. You gotta get people in office who care about you and have proven they cared about you just like we did in the 18th Congressional District, because I wasn't here when they talked about that race. I'm here today. Congratulations, my sister. I'm finally getting my sleep back. So, yes. <laughs> All right. We, uh, I've got 15 seconds. Yeah. So, um, HPD, I think they can take this as an opportunity mm -hmm. to look and unravel. Why did this happen? How, do you, how can you fix this? And then assess how many officers we need to have one of the best police departments in the United States. Thanks for joining us. We hope to see you next week. Have a great one.